It's a bummer being fat. Like, if I go to a thrift store and I buy a 4XL shirt, I know someone died in that shirt. I don't want that shirt. But I never hug. Please help me welcome to the stage, So Rap for Zesh. How is everybody? Everyone having a good time? The comedians are gonna get fatter and browner as the show goes, I apologize. I'm having a weird week. I accidentally broke a chair at a party. Let me tell you, if you're fat and you break a chair, you're done sitting for the night. That's it. <laughs> You've lost your sitting privileges. They've been revoked. I'm not gonna risk it. I'm not gonna break two chairs in one night. I'm gonna end up on the news. That's a spree. The Jeffrey Dahmer of chairs. Like a skinny person breaks a chair, people are like, oh look, a faulty chair. Someone needs to email the manufacturer. I break a chair, it's an ordeal. People are like, where are my children? <laughs> I went to a doctor recently. He was fatter than I was. I was furious. I didn't even think he was a doctor. I just thought he was another fat fuck waiting for the doctor. No, he took out a chart. He was like, you have high blood pressure. I was like, motherfucker, we have high blood pressure. We need to leave here and go to a real doctor. What are you talking about? Someone better call us an Uber XL. We gotta go, dude. I'm not taking medical advice from a guy I can't sit next to on an airplane. I'm just not gonna do it. Listen, if you're chubby and Middle Eastern like I am, DJ Khaled is your only celebrity. That's all I have. Do you understand me? That's the only person I have to look up to. You, you guys have so many celebrities to choose from. Musicians, politicians, athletes. I only have DJ Khaled. He's an idiot. Do you know what his stage name was before it was DJ Khaled? It was DJ Arab Attack. That's true. You can look that up. He put that on his taxes. That's what he went by. The crazy, the crazy thing is he changed it to DJ Khaled right before 9-11, which means DJ Khaled totally knew about 9-11. Like he heard the plan and he was like, one plane? No, another one. Add another one to the mix. Let them know we the best. <laughs> Did you just clap for 9-11? Fuck, oh, dude. What is your problem? That's cold-blooded, man. Ma'am, have you ever done cocaine? You've never done cocaine? Do you want to do something? You want to go in the bathroom? Talk about our small business ideas? Hang out? I think cocaine should be legal. What do we think about that? One woo? All right. Very respectable woo. Not a lot of cocaine, just like a bump at a time. That's it. Do we know what a bump is? It's a very small amount of cocaine. You do off of like a house key or a stripper's fingernail. Something's never been cleaned before, right? Just a little bit. It'll come in a little prepackaged plastic container. And you can only buy it at the airport. That's how we'll do it. What a perfect place to do coke. You're at a Chili's Express, you got your shitty kids with you. You're going to Orlando, fuck it. Do a bump, who cares? All the money goes to public schools, that's how we'll do it. Yeah, you like your music program, Billy? It's because I got zooted at O'Hare. I feel great. I like drugs. Any other drug fans in here? You just, you just yelled out weed? All right. I mean, that's fair. I've been talked about coke, beginning of it. That's, do, you, do you smoke a lot of weed? How do you smoke it? Edibles. Edibles, that's not, that's eating, ma'am. That's not smoking. <laughs> but I get it. You don't like to smoke, you prefer to, yeah. I like a, I'm a bong owner. That's like a different, if you own a bong, you're, you take it seriously. That's, like you can be into the outdoors, but once you own a Subaru, that's it. You've committed. <laughs> Bongs of the Subarus. <laughs> That makes sense. I feel like that makes sense. Bong ownership is Subaru ownership. <laughs> it's pretty funny, right? I like weed. I, I smoke a lot of weed. I'm not even good at smoking weed. I accidentally smoked crack like two days ago. I didn't... <laughs> shut up. I didn't need to do it. It was an accident. I didn't wake up that day scrounging around looking for crack. That's what crackheads do. I was at a show 
and a gentleman in a Looney Tune shirt tucked into his jeans. That's what he was wearing. He asked me if I wanted to smoke. I'm not gonna lie to a fellow who's dressed business casual like that. I said, yes. We went outside, he handed me a joint. I took a puff of the joint and the joint made a lot of noise. It was very loud. And in my experience, marijuana is a very quiet drug. It doesn't make a lot of noise. So I asked him a few questions. I was like, sir, what's going on with your joint? Is it just a Bluetooth speaker that you're passing around? Perhaps it's full of firecrackers. Let's troubleshoot your joint. Let's figure it out. And he said, don't worry. So I wasn't worried, but he said, don't worry. I sprinkled a little bit of my crack in there. That's what he said. He called it my crack like it was his grandma's recipe. I really appreciated that. And then he passed me the joint again. It was next in my rotation of people accidentally smoking crack. And I didn't know what to do, so I smoked it again. I did. I did smoke. I did hit it a second time. Let me tell you why I did that. The only time in your life it's appropriate to smoke crack is after you've already smoked crack. That's it. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to do it guilt free. I'm gonna do it. It's not that big of a deal. Like you ever go to a restaurant, you order something, you get the wrong thing and you eat it anyway. Exact same situation, right? I didn't order a joint of crack, that's what I got. I'm hungry. Also, who shares crack? I've never heard of that my entire life. We're in a recession, you're sharing crack? What are you doing? That's the most Christian thing I've ever heard of in my life. That's what Jesus would do if he smoked crack. He'd be like, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the crack. That's how that would have gone. He would have been up in two days selling all the copper wiring he'd get his hands on. Drugs get me in trouble. I'm not too good at even doing them. Does anyone in here know about Cedar Point? You know about Cedar Point? Isn't that place amazing? Yeah, it's it. For anyone who doesn't know, Cedar Point's the greatest amusement park in the world. They have the best roller coasters. If you want to ride a roller coaster, you have to go to Cedar Point. It's in a little place in Ohio, Sandusky, Ohio, I believe it is. I am not legally allowed to step foot anywhere near Cedar Point. I will be arrested immediately. I'll tell you the story. This is a true story. When I was in college, I used to sell mushrooms because I'm Persian. I'm very mercantile. I'm a businessman. <laughs> I like to sell shit, right? One year, me and my fraternity brothers, we got a job at Cedar Point. And I was like, this is a great opportunity for me to make some money. I'm gonna bring a bunch of mushrooms with me to Cedar Point. I'm gonna sell them. I'm gonna be rich. Unfortunately, I get to Cedar Point, I realize all the other kids are dorks. They don't want my mushrooms. Not only do they not want them, they're mad I have them. They're gonna call the police on me. So I did what any businessman would do. I ate all the mushrooms, right? I ate about an ounce and a half of mushrooms, which is way, way that guy is eating mushrooms. He knows. That's way too many for one person to eat. And you know what happened after I ate them? I put on my Cedar Point uniform and I went to work. I was like, fuck it, what's up? What are we doing? I thought I was gonna get like a really easy task, but no, I got there. I wasn't sweeping the floor, grilling hot dogs. They were like, you gotta operate one of these rides. <laughs> I'm not sure how I got promoted so fast, but I was like, fuck it, I'm down, let's do this. And the ride I got was Millennium Force. Oh, this, yeah, I know. Yeah. That's the best ride at Cedar Point. It's also the most dangerous. It's the fastest, highest, it's a crazy ride, right? And it was really easy to operate. It was two buttons. It was a green button and a red button. You push the red button to, you push the green button to go, you push the red button to stop. It was very simple. I was nailing it. You couldn't even tell I was high outside of the fact that I was very sweaty. That kind of gave it away. <laughs> but I'm chubby, so no one asked any questions about that one. Everything's going smoothly. Eventually a group of people got on the ride and they don't look like they're having any fun. Their energies were off. So I did them a favor. After the ride ended, I never pushed the red button. I just let him go through the ride a second time. And then a third and a fourth time. <laughs> On the fifth time, I got fired. They yanked me out of the seat. They threw me in the back offices of Cedar Point. They were yell I knew I was about to get yelled at. I knew I was about to get fired. And you know when you're high and you're like, fuck it, let's get a little higher. Cause you know what I saw on the desk? I saw a little can of keyboard duster and I love inhalants. I'm a big fan of whippets. Whippets are a beautiful thing. Those are naturally occurring. Jesus put hose here on earth for us to enjoy. Those are the best. They come in the shape of whipped cream and keyboard duster. So I, I decided to do a couple whiffs, but I was so high, I didn't read the can correctly. Cause it wasn't keyboard duster, it was WD-40. <laughs> so now I got a mouthful of oil, I'm sweaty, I'm high. I'm dangerous, I'm like a wild animal back there. <laughs> ah, 
I'm freaking out, right? At that very moment, I don't know how, this is a true story, at that very moment, Cedar Point Upper Management opens the door, they take one look at the situation, they call the police, as they should. That's the responsible thing to do is management. Eventually the police showed up and I was kind of freaking out. I wasn't that, I wasn't that worried. I don't know why, I think I was just too high to care. But I will tell you, this is when I, this is when I freaked out. Because they brought a dog, and the dog had a vest on. I don't know why, but the vest on that dog really fucked me up. I was... That scared the shit out of me. That They were like, put a vest on it! We gotta go! I don't know why. So now I'm scared. The police are asking me a lot of questions. They're like, tell us where the drugs are. And I know what's going on. So I told them the situation. I was like, officer, it's true. I did bring a lot of mushrooms with me to Cedar Point, but I ate them all. They're gone. And I said this. I go, case closed. <laughs> like a lawyer. Case closed. With a mouthful of oil, sweaty as shit. The worst lawyer you could ever possibly hire. The crazy thing is, it worked. The police were like, that's it. Let's go. He's right. Case closed. We don't have jurisdiction in his tum-tum. We get the vest off that dog. We gotta go right now. Cedar Point was furious. They were like, what are you doing? You gotta arrest this man. And the police said the craziest thing I've ever heard. The police were like, we're not gonna arrest him because it's totally legal to be high. You just can't have any drugs on you. I love America. This place rules, man. This is why I moved here. <laughs> Am I the only Middle Eastern person up here? Are there any more? Hey, shit, where are you from? Ooh, you don't want to tell us. All right, spicy. Where? Syria. Syria. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm Persian. Any other Persians in here? All right, two's the limit. That's it. <laughs> don't let any more in here. Any more come in here? This is technically a hookah lounge. Let's watch out. Any more come in here? We're going to start selling cell phone accessories. It's going to be bad. Listen, I got to get out of here. I'll, uh, am I the fattest person in here? Are there any other fatties? Don't look. Why are you looking? That's weird that you're looking. I want more fat friends. That's all I want. I just want more fat friends to hang out with. But we don't live long. That's the issue. We're very cute. We're very cuddly. We got a lot of health problems. We're like pugs. You ever see a pug? That's exactly how they are. Cutest dog in the world, but they live for two weeks. I don't know why. If you have a pug, go home. That thing is dead. It's a bummer being fat. Like, if I go to a thrift store and I buy a 4XL shirt, I know someone died in that shirt. I don't want that shirt. I want a shirt, not a ghost. I don't like doctors. I'm unhealthy. They're mean to me. If I go see a doctor, it's like I'm seeing a high school bully for medical advice. I don't like it. They're just going to call me obese, no matter what I'm there for. I could be there for a gunshot wound. He'll be like, yeah, you got shot because you're fat. Watch out. Someone thought you were an animal. Stay home. For me. <laughs> I like a cheap doctor. I like a doctor you can afford, right? Like, you ever go to Walgreens and there's a doctor's office in the back of Walgreens? That's my shit. I want to buy flaming Hot Cheetos from the same guy that's telling me not to eat flaming Hot Cheetos. <laughs> But you gotta be careful with that, because one time I got a prostate exam at Dollar General. Let me tell you guys the story and then I'll leave. I didn't mean to do it, I had to get a prostate exam. I was getting older, I picked the cheapest doctor's office I could find. It unfortunately shared a building with a Dollar General. I don't know if they were affiliated, I don't know if it was Dollar General Hospital, but I went anyway. Everything looked normal, doctor showed up, he put a finger in my butt, which in his defense he was supposed to do, but while he had a finger in there, he was like, oh man, I gotta go get Mike. And I was like, who the fuck is Mike? Why are we including a second person? What are you, stuck? We don't need Mike. This is fine. And he said this, a doctor said this to me. He was like, no, I gotta get Mike because you got a long ass. That's what he said. Those are the medical terms he chose to use. He was like, I couldn't reach your prostate. It's like a Buick back there. It's huge. I can't reach it. I gotta get Mike. And he was like, I gotta get Mike, because Mike has a real long, bony finger. That's what he told me. Those are Mike's qualifications. Everybody in town knows Mike and his giant finger. But here's the problem. He never called him Dr. Mike. He just called him Regular Mike. Who the fuck is Regular Mike? I don't want Regular Mike. I want Mike PhD. I don't want Mike, the night manager at Dollar General. He was like, it's fine, I'll go get Mike. 
Unfortunately, Mike showed up to this thing. He was wearing a Looney Tunes shirt tucked into his jeans. That's how he showed up. All right, you guys are great. Thank you very much. So, Everybody, give it up for Thorab.